uh, who would like to ask a question about the challenge document, what they haven't understood, um, for example, last time from the challenge document, and they want to make sure that they want to understand this time. So let's start from very basic about anything that is not clear in how you read and understand and consume the, you know, and go through the, the week. Any general questions? Uh, yeah, yes, Sabna. Uh, how are you? I came back home after, after, after what, uh, three days, I think. Sorry um, to hear that. Is that you were in the hospital? Of course, uh, starting from uh, Friday's evening. Okay. And that was, that's was, and, uh, mm. Where was it? Is that uh, something serious? Uh, oh, of course. A, a heart case with my sister. Oh. A severe heart case, actually. Oh, sorry to hear that. I hope she is sure. doing well now. Uh, and, uh, have another 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 person in place to take care of her right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, actually, I was uh, trying to read and articulate the solutions being there in hospital, even if I can't do with my PC. But uh, uh, I wonder if uh, if you clarify on. Uh, uh, the satisfaction measure that we have done uh, last week because uh, there are two perspectives that I can understand from uh, the coalition, I think. Um, what I was perceiving is um, the satisfaction is the average of both engagement in the experience course it says. So are we averaging the engagements for each particular data or column or end experiences uh, score by themselves, or are we averaging the engagement and the experience by uh, some yeah. So what I mean by questions uh, right now would be just talking about the challenge this week, but this is a good question and maybe ask it on the Slack for last week, because mm -hmm. what we are doing is that we're, we usually just go um, because the you know this week's challenge itself is big, so okay. it's much more of like we would focus now for this week so that we don't confuse anybody and we don't talk about last week's challenge. This is much more of about in general what is the challenge document, whether it's you know something clear or not, or which sections to focus or whatever the general. Or we will talk about just uh, this week's challenge, which is going to be on AB hypothesis testing. But I think okay. that question is relevant and ask it on the Slack. Okay, uh, I will come back with uh, today's challenge. Right. Okay. Anyone else on how to, you know, go through and read and understand and follow everything I hope is clear. Uh, was there any challenge in that, in that sense as a general, not about just a particular challenge, but the way the challenge document so we will we are working to also make sure that this challenge document is in the 10x system so that it is sectioned and written accordingly but um hopefully this is clear if not you can ask me now and who has read the current week challenge and who likes to explain what they understand in let's say 30 seconds who's willing to explain what they have understood um, the task of this week is. Because usually, if I, if I explain it, fine, you will understand it. But if you try to explain it and I explain it, then it also is better sometimes. Not Niall. Uh, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes. Uh, OK, I think uh, this week's challenge is more related on predicting if the ad was uh, successful or not. So the ad campaign run, uh, they say that like uh, our ad is more known. If uh, somebody says it, it will it will sure he will he or she will surely recognize the company. So I think this is that. We don't have data. We don't have data. 
if I predict it to that product or not. Okay. So if if you were if you were to explain it, so this one assume you assumes the audience is us, so you know what you, what you mean by ads and stuff like. But try to explain it to your friend who is not in in Ten Academy. So what is this week's challenge? What are you supposed to do? In thirty seconds, kind of very short. Okay. Uh, let's say for example, he runs an ad. An ad, uh, some advertisement for some company, and the company paid uh, for paid for the advertisement to be live or to go on. So the company that runs the ad is claiming that our ad is going to be successful if you run it by us or the, or if you are the one who are advertising it. So that's I think that that we are predicting that if the if the ad is successful or not or the ad was somehow recognized or not that's my understanding so far very good yeah and instead of predicting you could say measuring or uh, you know collecting evidence or you know so that's much more of a measurement right you are predicting means to to actually try to improve it while measurement means if something has run and if you say it, it's, it has been working, you are validating it or you're kind of giving evidence. But other than that, that's good. Okay. Uh, Adiat? Um, I actually, I understand it. I don't think I understand it quite well. I, I was raising my hand to ask questions when you have when you asked a few minutes ago that if you have any question concerning the sure go on. concerning the challenge yeah okay um the same issue i have with uh previous weeks so I, and it usually to take me some time the report the rip, github sample report provided so i'd like to know how each each file in each folder connects with each other so that that would be very very helpful if i i don't if understand I get sorry know, repeat it i like to know each file in each folder how, how they connect to how, how they connect to each other how, we, we don't uh, provide the relationship. we don't we don't provide we don't provide any starter code you have to build everything it's so it's only in week zero we provide it and then after that last week was an example you could follow but it we don't provide any um you have to start from scratch and build the package so in a way that you have to you know create folders you have to create files you have to relate them yourself so it's there's no package or there's no example we give it's just last week was much more to follow like as a kind of but not to copy like it's just that you have to create it yourself I know. according you know that's what you, you would have to explore how should i arrange it's like you know if you are in an office how would you arrange your documents right and there are some guidelines okay you know and maybe just put them in certain folders and label them and put them and some would tell you maybe related maybe alphabetical maybe this maybe that maybe in this case usually like okay notebooks like which are uh, would be in one folder scripts in another folder tests in one folder models in that, like that and then github actions in, in another so it's you who then relate and then you write you know like on top of those then you have this and that but it's up to you who create everything you know um and who should understand and explain what how they they are linked to all right thank you uh, Margaret? Um, hi. I you said? The... No, we went. Uh, thanks, Adiet. Yeah. Uh, Margaret, continue. Um, I think the main purpose of this uh, week two challenge is to optimize marketing strategies using AB tests with machine learning. So basically, the system or the model that we build um, 
has to learn your customer's behavior and then it improves itself to optimize ads, which means saving more money and gets to reach more people in a short amount of time. But, uh, but from the tasks, do you think what are you required to do? Is this to measure or to optimize the... Um, so, of course, the outcome of it is to optimize, but the, like if you um, look at the past... To tasks, measure performance. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, in general, though, that's correct. We are trying towards that. So the goal after this would be, of course, if something doesn't, then there, there is an optimization part. But this one is measurement particularly. Michael. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Hello, can it's you, a slightly weak. Can, yeah. can you hear me? We do. Yeah. Go on. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, this week's challenge is uh, uh, focused on uh, an advertising company called Smart Ad. It is uh, a mobile advertising company that uh, runs an online ad for uh, its clients with an intention of increasing the brand uh, awareness. And uh, this client wants us uh, to test if the ads are uh, that the advertising company are showing or the, uh, the ads that the advertising company is running are uh, resulted in significant uh, in the brand awareness of the customers. Uh, this is the objective of uh, this week's challenge and our client is uh, uh, called SmartAd and it provides some advertising uh, platforms uh, to its clients and our client is uh, smart that, that is an advertising great. company great that's really well explained but what are the things that you're expected to do then to basically address the issues raised or the objective okay uh, i haven't really completed all the document but I'm on the very beginning page of the document, yeah. but as, awesome. I under, as I understand, yeah. the objective we will, we will provide. Understood. So we will provide uh, a brand impact optimizer uh, questionnaire that will uh, assess the uh, impact of the engagement of the page as that the advertisement company shows. Uh, for any client across different platforms, and we will be uh, uh, designing a machine learning hypothesis testing algorithm for the uh, brand impact optimizer uh, question. Very well. Well explained. So. Okay, thank you. Can you mute it, Michael? Because you have a very bad, high background. Okay. So, hi, hello everybody. Um, I honestly didn't see the, the whole explanation, but I think I get it from the other uh, who tried to explain it. But I just had a question, or uh, maybe it's very uh, early to ask this question. Maybe you are planning to explain it later on, but I just wanted to know a little bit about the group uh, thing because I am. Um, I, I don't quite understand what it meant. I was actually going down, and uh, that was the first question I uh, have. So, yeah. as I, I said, I, you, maybe you, you might have planned. Okay, sorry. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yes, Savane? I understood. Uh, it is an agreement uh, of uh, brand awareness and it will implement something that can be done so uh, posting or exposing others. So uh, the challenge is aimed at if or no, whether the user or uh, 
any random user is aware of the brand or not based on the yes or no questions. So we are going to analyze this data for uh, uh, the mutual benefit of the client and uh, the advertising company, I think. But uh, one thing confusing is uh, uh, when I see the data, uh, the major focus is on yes or no columns that uh, um, there is there is there is a data value. I don't know. We will uh, we will expand for the future. But uh, it's filled zero zero for uh, the two columns. But this implies that there is another option. So no, you may there, clarify that. There that is there. no. The, yeah, there is no other option. It means just like a user hasn't replied. A okay. User has mm -hmm. seen this question, but uh -huh. didn't say. You know didn't say, didn't reply. Okay. Mm. Oh. Yeah. So that's kind of missing value or the user didn't interact. So, but I, I think, you know, Michael has explained well, in the sense you really are measuring and also others before. It is not about for the client and for that to say, you know, to, yes, it's true, it's for the mutual benefit of both the client and, uh, you know, the ad agency. But the element, the most important part is it's evidence synthesis. So whenever you see A-B testing, what you are saying is that you there is some uncertainty on, you know, there's no evidence in something and you want to have evidence. This A-B testing in particular is really, really common, for example, in website designs, right? What are the... the Uh, okay, guys, it seems we've lost Tiepebal. Um, let's just wait for him. Oh, oh, everyone, uh, okay. disconnected. Um, yeah. So, where I was, I think you lost me when I was about, when I was saying about what A-B testing is. And in the A-B hypothesis testing, the most important thing you know is that there is, you're trying to test the hypothesis, which means that something is unknown and there is no evidence. And then you, you are trying to basically generate evidence, statistical evidence. And statistical evidence really means just the heart of statistics. So, so you have to understand critically statistical things, statistical hypothesis testing, because everything when we say data driven, in some way we are doing lot hypothesis testing one way or another. So this is just everywhere, like whether you are policy designing or sales, you know, what is affecting sales? You know, of course you might select certain things, you might, uh, but whenever you're trying to, for example, come up with a certain hypothesis, maybe our sales will increase if I do X, Y, Z. Then in some way, of course, there are, it's not just only A-B testing, but in some way you are trying to, to say like, you know, let's, let's do some kind of hypothesis testing. A-B is basically means A one, one thing and B is another thing, right? So it's like you are A-B testing, but there are of course in statistical things, you may have a to Z testing, right? So if you have multiple, multiple types of tests, like that means you don't know whether it's A, whether B or C or D or E, then you try to test multiple uh, testing. But in this case, this is much more of like the simplest, usually the binary testing, the binary hypothesis. So, the, so that means there is one null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis that you are testing, okay? 
and there is really the heart of it is the problem is that sometimes testing the null doesn't mean rejecting the, the alternative things like that because statistics really measures only based on samples it has based on data so that's where this this part today or this this week's challenge is really statistical and you might you should be really paying attention because everywhere you go as long as whether you are data engineer machine learning engineer or data scientist you know you are trying you are helping others to get to be data driven or evidence based that means evidence statistical evidence usually okay so that's the heart of it so it was said and i i don't know who had another hand to explain but if not i will just continue uh, explaining so i think it was well described by michael and others and so that is good the objective is exactly that so there is um, you know basically the brand impact optimizer which is basically a questionnaire so already an ad is displayed and when that ad is so an ad has been run or will be run let's say and then you want to know if and you know ads are run for different reasons sometimes the the most common you know are for kind of selling something right if you advertise in facebook you say like you know buy this that's kind of an ad to increase your sale that's a common one but it's not always the case you know bigger brands like coca-cola or you know uh, anything that you know even google or microsoft they don't run sometimes they run only for a certain campaign sometimes it's called so there are a number of in this advertisement space there are a number of reasons why you would be running and that objective why you are running for example sometimes it's for increasing sale but sometimes it's to increase the brand coca-cola runs you know uh, basically more, much of its campaign is not to increase sale it is directly measured or it's kpi or the the more you know, the, the the heart of the the advertisement it is to increase brand of course brand increase or brand awareness brings sales increase indirectly but that's not they are not measuring directly sales but they are increasing do people so and of course they they have also you know categories like people let's say females males you know uh, uh kind of children below 10 years old right so all of those kind of things is their objective and they want to measure like their brand awareness within that certain segment so sometimes it's brand awareness sometimes it's ad recall that means do people recall that they have seen us before you know or purchase intent that is basically like you're now specifically saying like do people have the intention now to buy after seeing this ad and sales is another you know next level right so it's it's just in in this marketing strategy there is you know a number of uh, strategies but so in this case the brand awareness is the one part that i um, that you would be trying to whether after running the ad which was designed to increase brand awareness then you are asked if actually brand awareness has happened that means has you know has the ad changed the awareness of people uh, and to do that what has what you will use is the bio that means the brand or impact optimizer that will basically uh, ask people who have seen the ad and those who hasn't seen the ad so that's the, the people who have seen the the previous ad about that company is called exposed groups and the people that hasn't seen the ad are the control groups and then you want to see if between the control and the exposed if there is a difference statistical difference that's basically it and the data that you have is just this it's collected based on just this the the brand in this case is lux uh, and you want basically the uh, um, smart ad basically has shown ads already about to increase the uh, brand lux in this case and now you are asking people who are seen that uh, and then no, those who didn't see this question and you collect this data and then from this data you want to be able to measure whether there has been you know a, a lift a significant lift or statistical significant lift on brand awareness due to that 
and the data looks like that and the outcomes are like that and these ones are just common now let me come to the group we made it just group work because as i said earlier it's a very very stickle intensive project uh, as well as also of course there are different uh, ml ops pipelines and data versioning and others that you have to use and so this in this case we allowed like we basically formed uh, gave you just these uh, groups so you will you will be working with your group so in this case for example first group are these people and they will work together their reporting plus of course they can work as a you know they can create git organization to work together they can collaborate on git but ultimately when they submit they fork and submit uh, the part we see as you have seen already we will see exactly who contributed so we know that you have to contribute within the group if or if it's only contributed for example in this in this case you know by michael and adiant and others didn't contribute then we know you know you basically uh, we don't know how much what, what you have done so you have to form that that kind of group work and collaborate this is basically you know within a company you will be tasked as a team you will be tasked to finish this thing and everybody you should divide work and you should be contributing and your report must be individuals that means after after working on the technical things and everything after discussing and understanding the statistics whatever ultimately when you write your report it has to be your report not the group report okay so um there are some questions it seems so for yeah thanks uh, i think that was very clear but just to make sure uh, we are going to have uh, one github repository which we'll collaborate and work with but when we uh, submit the submissions on wednesday and uh, saturday we are going to fork that uh, repository into our own uh, and we are going to submit the one we forked or the one we collaborated on so if it is a GitHub organization, not a personal account, then you can send, you can all submit. Uh, of course, I would recommend you still to fork it. Why do why do why do we want that? It's because you know other companies when they come and see, we want them to see. You know, they usually just go to your GitHub page or your GitHub repositories and they see your activities. Surely, the things that you contributed to anyone will be reflected, but. The repositories that are not forked into your space they will not be able to see it so as you might by now guess and know that all our interest is preparing for job placement right so that means we want to be able to really provide your just like your linkedin space your you know um your github your profile we want you to have the github profile to look very professional and have so much you know greens and active and the repositories that you have worked and contributed so that's the reason that we want you to fork but if if you have created a common repository with a name called you know github this thing called github organizations you can form any for any project if that is the case you can also submit just that one but what we don't want is that if you if you are collaborate if you have collaborated on one for example on your on your github account everyone is committing whatever but we don't want them to submit with your account name you know Fasaha being in the account name we want it to be we want them to fork it and and uh, submit their version okay like uh, from their accounts but if it is a github repository yeah. you are allowed because then it, it's not about one particular person it's an organization it's fine okay does that make it clear yeah it's very clear so it's a github organization i think that is uh, free to everybody yes yes yeah if you are public okay, if you are creating you. public uh, projects it's free so you can create yeah if not thank you. you know you can thank as i said ultimately you can for if you can collaborate on one of your uh, on one of the group members account and then ultimately then fork when you submit yeah but that should be the case thank okay. you very much that and is very clear no okay uh just just yes yeah hello hello uh about the project i was thinking that the brand awareness will be measured uh, through the yes or no question 
Yes. So, and then I was thinking that the test will be will, will be based on that. But in your presentation, you said that you, you test uh, this is different between the the two group of users. So, yeah, I'm a little bit I'm I'm confused. I, I want more. Yeah. So it's it's about so who answered this question is what makes a controller exposed. If you target it users who has been already who has seen already the ad before so this is the second campaign right the first campaign is that you have shown an ad that ad looks like you know let's imagine lux is uh, a car or something and then you say oh you know lux cars run uh, you know faster than ferrari something like that and then and then you showed you know you displayed that ad to different people now when you want to measure whether the brand awareness has increased, what you do is that you now have this very poor looking survey. You know, it, it's just a simple, you know, not that complex uh, ad itself. And then you show to the users who, who has seen the ad, the same question. And also you randomly select others who hasn't seen the ad, you ask them the same. So all of them comes as control and expose. So the ones who has seen the ad, they are called the exposed group. That means answers from them, data from them is called exposed and data from the ones that are um, that are randomly selected users are controlled. And both of them are actually in the same data set, in the same data set we, we gave. There is a column, of course, that experiment, it just tells you which group it belongs to, is a control or exposed. So yes. this is now, the column that distinguishes. Yes, okay. but uh, okay. I was thinking that in the exposed group, normally we should have only yes for them, right? Why? Okay, because uh, I was thinking that they have they, they have seen the AD, and then yeah, but they, they don't remember about the brand. But they don't remember. Do you remember every ad you have seen? No. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's a whole point. Otherwise, then it would have been really amazing then it's a hundred percent lift it's like you know it's just that's a problem in brand you don't know so many brands brands compete of course you know probably coca-cola because coca-cola have advertised the entire your your life you can't you you know it but that's what really is brand awareness but then a brand that is in in the supermarket that's that's i don't know about um sugar you don't know so you would probably not know some brands you know some brands you don't even if you have seen thousands of times yeah uh, i get it now okay and the next uh so my question is on the contribution aspect or the group for for aspect uh you said uh, uh it's uh we can use uh, GitHub uh, organization uh, repository. So is that the one you recommend or can we just uh, contribute on some some persons like uh, GitHub uh, profile and like fork it and submit? Yeah. Which one do you recommend? I think it's up to the groups, it, how easy they are on the Git. I think it's the, the easiest is if you just start, create a group, um, you know, a repos uh, an organization you know then it makes it really like, i recommend that one if you can but if you can't and if it's taking you time that means time means if you can't set it up today just use some one of the person's account okay thank you actually it's easier to just it is very easy yeah it's just up to yeah margaret yeah. um my question is about the controlled and exposed groups is it is yep. there a chance that some of the people from the exposed groups have not seen the ad? Um, so they, of course, that's called the A-B testing design. So how do you design it? That's the most challenging part, right? So if you want to now do it, that's where you, you're going to have an issue. How do you make sure that you select only the people who are exposed? So that means the error you, you're making. Usually in the past, you would use cash. That means, you know, if a user has the cash, um, then, you know, you would basically know that they have seen it. Um, 
so it's it's a targeting problem in this case you can assume everybody that is exposed has seen it they may have not interacted whatever but they have seen it but it's a, a good question in a sense that that you you know that's a design issue when you are designing a b testing that's the real real thing you have to solve okay Great, so that is clear. And now let's go up to this part is clear and let's go to the instructions. So there are, I'm gonna add here, I think this is um, that it's because it's already task four is your, um, So as you can see, task four is about actually applying the same code pipeline and understanding you have on a new data set. So, okay, so the, the part is that you are setting up the A-B testing framework. In that sense, you are actually also thinking what now Margaret asked, right? Margaret asked, so do you see my screen or not? I think you do see, right? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, okay. so... So the first part is to think about exactly the type of questions that Margaret has also asked in a sense that if you were to set up such thing, A-B testing, you know, what are the elements that you need to worry? So there is reading uh, associated to that. And then setting up a repeatable ML framework, that basically means, you know, setting up an A-B testing framework is that one is there are a few, a few ways, quick, the usual, it's called uh, student t-test, you know, that is basically the A-B testing uh, framework it could be Bayesian as well the, the classic one and then there is another one that so there is issues that you will you will understand a b testing is a very very simple and from conceptual perspective the problem is i think there are so many details one has to really ensure that something when your significant didn't you know just didn't is not a bias you know that makes it hard not only that the statistical power of your taste, the, the lift, whatever, it's really com gets complex. So understanding that, that part, the classical, and then there is another alternative called sequential. And the main thing about classical is that you have to predefine, just like any statistics, you have to predefine everything. So you can't test it whenever you want. While sequential testing has, it allows you, it's a type of a framework, a testing framework that allows you to see it anytime you want. There is advantage and disadvantage in both. One is more complex, the other one is simpler, but it has, you know, so you will understand. And then not only that, it's, as I said, the codes we have, we have provided some for the sequential tests, slightly it's in, involving, but the A-B testing, you can find it anywhere. Like every Google use it, you know, like every, it's basically in every browser nowadays, people use A-B testing to understand things, you know, whether they should use blue color or red color. You know, and so you basically set up that it's easy. There are lots of references, and then you will do A B testing with classical, sequential, and machine learning methods. And then, of course, you will interpret your result. That means you start thinking about the statistics itself. You know, is my result really correct? You know, what could it be problem and all that? And then I we gave we gave you also another data that's completely it's similar type of data but that comes completely from a different test and you will apply all of what you have done on this data on the what just the brand lux so the, the test framework then you will apply it to any other type of data okay it should be straightforward that means your pipeline your code pipeline should be independent of data um, if it's for a b testing it should work for any a b testing even if in this case even the the columns are the same but in the future even if the columns are not the same you should be able to apply you know okay that and so basically here are the, uh, the uh, parts. In the first part is A-B testing framework. And it's, you know, task one one is understanding the A-B testing framework. You know, how users are targeted. It's, as I said, it's just basically to understand, you know, the difficulties and the complexities that are involved in designing. You know, you could be designing a website, you could be designing for an ad, you could be doing something. So you should understand, you know, what, uh, what are the complexities that are involved in that design. And then also you will basically apply um, write codes for classical and sequential A-B testing. 
And then the second part is that you do something similar with machine learning. In, in, in AB normal testing, that means just classical or sequential, what happens is that you really are testing some, you know, um, basically statistical significance. While in this one, in the machine learning, it's a problem rotation. You're kind of reframing the problem as uh, much more, let's say, um, importance, feature importance. Because what you are saying is that there are different, there are different features, and one of the feature is called whether a user has seen it or not seen it. That means the experiment color, right? And then in the machine learning, say like you would say, if of course this if there is any significance in it, whether someone sees it or not, that variable or that feature is you know, more important or more discriminatory, whether something is or not. So that's basically, that's why you would do it in the, when you think of it in a machine learning sense, you would be thinking as feature importance and that's what you will do. And you will use different uh, ML methods for building a model and from that model to understand um, feature importance. So there are a number of creative things you can do as a feature importance. There are, you know, it's called wrapper methods in this case, um, but also you would be able to actually uh, select, you know, do some kind of, again, whether the feature importance, it is significant or not. So that's also on the feature importance, you can apply some, uh, significance test but i think the most important thing you do or you are asked actually is just to do um basically feature importance when when it is about a b testing with machine learning and the third part is as i said you will apply the the whole thing that you have done on a new data set uh, and we know the outcome of we have a clear understanding the outcome of this data so we'll be able to see how your codes and your understanding is correct and then you basically just then write, uh, interpret and uh, report it on a document, okay? And so the same this week, we have the tutorial schedules, the classical A-B testing by Nardos uh, later this afternoon. Tomorrow, there will be a sequential testing in the morning and machine learning models um, in the afternoon. Uh, and then on Wednesday, you will have CML and deployment by Anastasia. And then on Thursday, Azaria would give on ML flow and DVC. And the deliverables, as usual, I think it's there are two. Uh, on Wednesday, you will basically be. Um, so I think this should we should write. Uh, this is Wednesday at PM UTC, and this is okay. So that's basically. Um, the interim submission again it's just a link to your code uh, and then basically so this code you are basically trying to so to address at least the classical part and the sequential part um, on the interim and of course the full thing on the final submission again just the link and the basically your blog post okay and then leaderboard for the week is um, let me just separate it is basically calculated as you can see here uh, it's a lot more on presentation and reporting as well as clear code data and model versioning uh, this you would you would have to submit it as part of like for example the dvc the ml flow and all of the setup i'm just gonna i will update it here all of those setups uh, you would basically have to submit it as a screenshot whenever you are submitting uh, the git in the git link just, you know, I will explain it a little bit more here, actually the, in the deliverables that you have to submit the screenshots um, for your DVC uh, and ML flow um, part. We will see every other thing, especially CML. When it's working, you will be able to see it from your kit. Uh, but anything we don't see, just submit the associated screenshots, okay? Okay, and then the references are quite intense uh, or quite a lot we because this is as i said a lot more um, so key papers and blogs as well as um, you know things to really you should consider reading and then examples um, that are there okay i have seen gideon
Kirill? So we can't hear you if you are talking. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, you guys really should think about your audio. Go on, Gideon. We can't hear you again. Maybe you can type your question. Is it is anyone? Hopefully, Ishak, you, your, your question is answered. Okay, Mohammed. So, uh, do we need to do EDA test, uh, EDA uh, analysis? I think you should always, without it, it's almost impossible for you to understand anything. So, it's not asked. That it means, in a way, after some time, it's a given that you should be able to do your EDA to understand it. But we we assume whether you do or not, you have understood. Uh, but yeah, in principle, you should. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, Gideon, are you able to now? Can you hear me now? Yes, now it's clear. Sorry, my mic wasn't working. I had a question on the interim and final submissions. Yeah. So if we decide to use another uh, person's repository to collaborate on, do we have to fork the repository twice for the interim and final submission? Because we have to... I think so, yeah. Yeah, because so the thing is, it doesn't matter, right? In a way that uh, it should be that once you fork it, it should be, you can just go and you can say um, git pull upstream. So you then that means everything, you know, by when you submit Saturday, you just say git pull upstream. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So in a way that you only fork it once. And then after that, you did pull it from the fork. Okay. Hopefully it's clear and it's going to be a very interesting, it's a group work and you guys in a group discuss, also in a Slack discuss, of course, but make sure everybody contributes in a group, divide. The most important part is to really now, today, first to form your GitHub organization and second, it's also to try to you know, divide the work, plan it. You know, you you will really save so much if you just plan it today. Outline what everyone is doing and kind of like catch up, at least have a meeting, a G meet uh, twice a day at least. And then the rest you can coordinate it through Slack and make sure that you really, everybody has tasks and everybody is doing what they are supposed to do. And of course the persons assigned as a group lead should follow and ensure that people have delivered. You don't just ask them by the de deadline. You should have, you should be able to see whether they are gonna finish or not before the deadline, because by the deadline, you're delayed. So I would say it is a chance. The reason why we make it is that we want you to basically plan and coordinate a teamwork. And so that means you have to be very strategist, you know, and it be, if someone is inaccessible and addressed, you know, you have to ping them and you have to give them like, so, okay, if you haven't answered until this time, then somebody else would take over because that person may have, you know, power outrage or, you know, couldn't. But of course, you know, your group depends on you. And if you don't just notify your group when something happens, then you really are not responsible, right? So this is really a work environment, a work simulation. So I want you to all be like responsible to you know, be reliable to your team and contribute as much as you can. And within the group, really discuss and arrange, okay? Yeah, yes. So Michael, um, there is this list that I was exactly showing earlier on the uh, group work policy. There is this uh, table that shows which group you are in. And then the bold shows the group lead that that's assigned because we have an, a few other uh, ones so the group leads we rotate but so these are just the ones that are assigned great 
Mohammed, I hope is it a new question? Of uh, the last week uh, submission, the the dashboard and the report uh, submission. Yep. I missed it. Uh, do I have to work on it? Uh, so I submit it again, or uh, or do I just need to work on I think, I this think week so, and forget about it? Yeah. I mean, it's not about forgetting. You would have to do it at some point, uh, especially, but it's like you, know, you can't do now. Now it's time to move on and then only to work on later. So they, as you could see, like in the leaderboard, we would select um, your after week four, we would select the best four until week eight. And then after that, the best eight. But then there are a number of submissions that we require a minimum for, for basically to, to fulfill job readiness. You shouldn't miss more than some number of submissions. So if you miss, you may graduate, but you have to actually finish them even after the gra after graduation to complete it, uh, such that we start matching you. Because okay, for you. us, it's an important criteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an important criteria for us to know that someone has worked this amount, or someone has submitted, and their work has been evaluated n number of times. So just just like that. But now, don't worry about it. Move on and continue to focus only on this piece. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Is there any question I haven't answered? Are we supposed to discuss? We'll have to create a channel. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, as well as, you know, you can create a channel as well as also use Google Meets to coordinate. But you can create your own groups, um, group channel in Slack as well. But also, don't forget to interact with others. I think that one, Sanai, I, I think um, Everest can inform you if it's not already on the boarding document. It's, I think, technical. For each of the categories, there is some number. I, I don't remember it now, but uh, some number of submissions on the te non technical, there it must be below that number. It says there's three, or I think it's something like that. And then non technical, something like that. And then, uh, yeah, so it's there is a number for that one. So if it's not shared, I will ask Everest to share that number. Great, awesome. I hope it's all clear. So happy. Um, group work and A-B testing. Okay, thanks guys. And uh, 10X team, you can, uh, 10 Academy team, you can stop the recording and...